Specialist TV. Now this idea is completely inspired by Barley from Fabrications. You would have met Barley and seen her amazing cushion made out of woven ties in this video report that we did of her Upcycle Emporium. Now what you also could do with is some bonder web where it has paper on one side and then you cut it to the same size as the backing fabric for the, the woven tie. I've got that sort of nervous, anxious, butterfly feeling that you get when you cut into a, a garment when you refashion it, but we're just going to go for it. So this is what we do. So I'm having three rows going across and then when I'm happy with that, I'm going to get a pin. Um, I'm going to push it into the card to sort of hold it in place just for now. And as you can see, I've got the the back side of the ties facing me, yeah? So like the, the wrong side of the ties facing me. Now put them across as straight as you can. And then put pins in to hold them in place. Now if you're absolutely sure that that layout is gonna be okay, and the width is okay, allowing for like a little seam allowance, but you would have calculated that in the beginning when you did your card, you can chop them off. Now chop them off with a little bit of excess fabric. God, it's so painful doing this. <laughs> I do it all the time and I never get used to it. Right, I've just chopped off those ties. Whew. So now we're gonna look at the ties that are gonna weave in and out of it. I don't know if there's any particular way that you should be doing this, but we all know how to weave, so I'm just going to start weaving. Okay, very exciting. But right, I've got the little mini ironing board out, and I'm just warming up my iron. So let's go over what we're supposed to do, because I'm sort of learning as I'm going as well. It's very important that as you uh, weave your, your ties, that you allow the width of a tie and a little bit more away from the top when you start your ones going across, okay? So I seem to be four centimetres away from the top. You want to know what that is in inches, don't you? Okay, uh, one and three quarter inches away from the top. It's basically the width of a tie and a little bit more, all right? Because I'm trying to keep all my options open here. And then what's very important is that you're a seam allowance away from the edge and a bit more, okay, because then we can trim it back. You've got to make sure that when you weave them in and out, keep checking that they are kind of at right angles. Because these ties, they're not all kind of straight and squared off. So you might get some where they go a bit narrow that way. So what I did was the next one, I, I made it the, sure that the fat bit was down there and the thin bit here, so it ends up being square. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so I've put it now on here. Now before I add the bonder web to it, and before I take the pins out, I'm just gonna give it a little steam and a press. Because when you press fabric, sometimes it's kind of like turning it into paper, because you're making it so flat, and it just makes it easier to work with. So I've done that. I've no idea what the other side is. Oh yeah, the other really important thing is, look, do you remember the, the wrong side of the tie, so the bit where the seam is, is facing at me and the right side is underneath, okay? Now if I'm really sure that that's all good and I'm very, very careful, I'm going to start taking out my pins. Oh, 
I'm holding my breath, that's why I'm not talking. I'm going to get my Bonded Web. I'm going to put the Bonded Web right, look, the glue side down. And I'll position it with the top. Now my Bonded Web was cut just a little bit bigger than the, the backing fabric for the ties, okay? Make sure it's square. And when you're definitely, definitely happy, you're going to iron that bonder web on, okay? So keep doing that until you're really, really sure you've got all the bonder web onto the back of the ties. And then leave it to cool. That is important. Leave it to cool. Whilst we're waiting for the bonder web to go off, I thought we'd just recap on something and I thought it might be of interest to you. So the ties going across, I've just measured them, they're ten and a half inches and we've got one, two, three of them. The ties going down are eight and a half inches long, okay, and we've got six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now when you think that this has completely gone off, you can start peeling away the paper from the back, but that only works if it's properly gone off, okay? Now do it really carefully, and the places where you haven't got any tie, Obviously, it's not going to stick because there isn't anything there. So just be careful. Right, now in doing just that, it holds all of those ties together, which makes it easier for you to work with. Now, I just want to cut away these bits where there isn't any um, tie, because I know if I don't do that, I'm probably going to see all this jelly stuff on my backing fabric and I don't want that. Right, so I'm happy with that. Dare I take it off? Yep, so I'm going to take it off. Now before, uh, see how patient I am? Before I look at the other side, I'm going to put the backing fabric on. You can use any side that you want, okay? But make sure you stick to the centimetre seam allowance and that it fits the width. It's got to fit along the top here. Don't worry about the bottom at the bottom. Don't worry about the bottom at the moment. But just make sure you align it properly. Now, if you're totally happy with that, even though it's wool, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. We're not going to see this, so it doesn't matter, okay? But you know normally when you press wool, you have to put a tea towel on top. But we're not doing that now. You don't want glue on your ironing board or your iron, actually. So that's the reason for putting the tea towel on top. So just keep doing that, and then in a minute we'll look at the other side. Right, before we do the reveal, I'm going to trim off these excess bits. Trim off those excess bits. Trim them off here as well. and along the bottom. Are you ready? So that's my top, isn't it? Oh, that's so lovely. Now that is really, really good. Now we've made it longer, remember, than we actually need, so that we've got enough stuff to play with when we're planning where we're gonna put our leather and how we're gonna finish off the bottom. So now we're gonna have a look at seeing how much and how <laughs> we're going to incorporate leather into it and how short it's going to be because it's probably going to be about that short. Right, you know how we cut everything bigger because we were going to sort of decide <laughs> what we were going to do as we went along? Well, now you'll see why. Now, I'm, I'm going to have a piece of leather this is actually fake leather. Now the amount of leather that I'm going to cut
for this is okay the leather that I'm going to cut I'm going to cut it to about two and a half inches so and what's going to happen is that's going to be attached to right sides together onto there in line with the top of that line of ties okay and then I'll cut away the excess and this is what I attach my zip onto that way it's not going to be so bulky I can see that I probably want the bag to finish there so I need to allow a seam allowance so if I'm happy that that's where it's going to be oh my goodness that's so thick <laughs> I can safely oh, cut it with the seam allowance, allowing the seam allowance, if you know what I mean, across the bottom. Now I'm probably going to cut that a bit straighter in a minute because I did it upside down. Now if you want to know what my measurement is for the sort of final shape of the bag, it's 10 inches coming across the top where the zip's going to go which is 26 centimetres and the length of it is seven and a half inches which is 19 centimetres.